this is day two of getting my garden ready for the fall today we're only gonna have a high of 106 which is hotter than it was yesterday yesterday it was 103 but better than it'll be later this week when it's gonna go back into like the 111s 112s today i'm going to be top dressing all of my beds with compost that's still in the back of my truck and has been there for like the last month i don't even know why i'm so worried because that's the whole reason that i bought this gorilla cart i set up my gorilla cart a few weeks ago so i'm ready just kidding, I'm not ready, but I'm as ready as I'm gonna be. I need to carry all this to the backyard. <laughs> I love adding compost to serendipity because I feel like it just reinvigorates the garden with a lot more nutrients that the plants are then able to take up. But also, I love topping my garden beds and all of the containers with it because over the summertime, everything dries out so much that there's dry leaves everywhere. The foliage is, turns a little bit more yellowish brown. And so the beds oftentimes can look a little bit messy and it's hard to point out any new sprouts that come up because there's bits of pieces of plants everywhere. But adding compost on top of the garden beds, it just makes the entire space look so much more tidy and put together and beautiful and then whenever any new sprouts start popping up i'm able to tend to them a lot better early on because i can actually see them plus it helps me raise the soil level in the garden beds again because usually by the summertime a lot of the organic matter that i had inside of the beds has broken down so the soil level goes down significantly and then that's when i add more organic matter top it with compost and then over time that's going to get broken down and the soil level is going to go down again and it's just a cycle that I'm gonna continue repeating and this is how I'm going to be building up soil over the next few years. I finally have cocoa core, my brother gave this to me. And I'm so grateful. Oh, so it's I think my body's still exhausted from yesterday. But okay, that's round one. I'm gonna finish bringing down the bags of Coco core and then I'm gonna start getting to work on the compost. The compost I bought from the AZ Worm Farm. When I first started gardening, the soil didn't look anything the way it looks like today. It wasn't very dark, it wasn't very rich. If anything, it was a very light grayish, brownish color because it was constantly drying out. And now whenever I dig in there, it looks gorgeous. It's very dark and rich and full of moisture and life. I love it. And compost helps me get that effect because unfortunately for me, I am not very good at making compost myself yet. I feel like I'm getting the hang of what you can put in there. It's just that I can't seem to keep it hydrated long enough because it gets so hot outside that I don't go out there to water my compost bin. Plus the first one I ever tried is the kind that you rotate. And that one, while it looked like it would be functional and a lot more tidy, I just feel like it dries out way faster. I've had better luck just getting a black trash can and then adding all of my compost stuff in there. And over the course of a few months, that turned into compost, but it's definitely not enough to top all of my garden. So I really like buying bulk compost. And whenever I'm in a pinch, I also will pick up the mushroom compost, but there was a time where it was sold out at my local Lowe's. And every time I would go, I couldn't find it anywhere. So then I started using the composted manure, but I still prefer the mushroom compost. And I really, really like the bulk compost. The only thing I don't like about it is having to transport it from the back of the truck into the garden beds. And I think this is probably only the second time, if I'm not mistaken, that we've bought bulk compost. The first time was when we actually set up all of Serendipity, all of the six garden beds, because we had mixed the soil ourselves. But at that point in time, it was also a lot easier to transport it because the pathways were a little bit wider. There was definitely not as many plants anywhere. Everything was just barely getting started. So it was a lot easier to bring the compost in. But now because I have so many containers and the walkways are just so narrow, it makes it more tricky to get the compost into the garden beds but man does it make a world of a difference and i feel like it's worth it every single time but it is very labor intensive why does it look red i feel like i can see some red tinges in there i'm not sure what that is I 
I totally forgot, but before I dump it, I have to pull up all of the irrigation lines. Otherwise, they'll be buried really deep. But first, I'm going to take off all of the plant tags that I've used. That way, I can just reuse them. My eyes hurt so bad from all the sweat and sunscreen that keeps getting in them. But I have to keep going. So if you see me squinting, that's why. In the past, I would wear my contacts and that felt even worse because I felt like they trapped it in there and I, oh, it would take me longer to recover. So that's why I'm gonna stick to wearing glasses whenever I'm gardening now. I'm also putting on gloves because I will get blisters. I'll probably still get blisters regardless, but this will just make the process a little bit less painful for me. So I'm gonna keep pulling up all of my irrigation lines. The coolest thing about this Gorilla Cart that I'm super excited to test out Is a dumping feature well you know what though it might be kind of difficult <sighs> at this moment i knew i messed up when i purchased this gorilla cart it was a huge investment for me and i purchased it specifically for this project so that i could bring the compost into the garden and be able to dump it out because i figured that would just make the whole process so much easier so i built it a few weeks ago after it was sitting in my living room floor for the longest time unopened because i was so intimidated the whole process of building it and putting it together was very simple and easy and i made sure to measure the width of the pathways so that i knew whether or not the cart could fit through but i never thought to make sure that the dumping feature would actually be able to work because i hadn't used the cart so I didn't know how much extra it needed to extend. And because I didn't take that into account, I realized it's a useless feature at this point because I can't fit it through my pathways. They're way too narrow. So I already have it in my mind that whenever I buy a larger property, I'm going to make sure that my garden pathways are a lot more wide, especially if I'm growing in raised garden beds. Yep, nope, I won't be able to dump it, dump it because I don't have enough room. <sighs> okay, let me go get the shovel. Even though I was livid with myself having to scoop out shovelful after shovelful of the bulk compost, it is still so worth it in my opinion because it's very cost effective. So for a whole cubic yard, I paid about $30. And the compost that I bought this time around was a City of Phoenix compost. I called to make sure that it was safe to use in raised garden beds and they said it was completely fine because they also sell some bulk screened compost, but that one is like $80 for a cubic yard. And at the time they were completely out of it. So I got the City of Phoenix compost and it worked amazing. And remember that red tinge that I saw in the mold? Well, it stumped me for a little while. I finally figured out that it was just the reflection of the little side thingy on the truck. The little light was reflecting onto the mold and giving it that red hue. And as soon as I moved the car, it was completely fine. So I felt kind of silly at that point. Spreading the actual mold is probably not that bad. It doesn't take that long. It's not too time consuming. And I kind of like it. It's a little bit therapeutic and being able to cover it all up and see all of the garden beds look so uniform makes my heart happy and my brain happy as well. But the part that I didn't like was having to use a shovel to get them out of the gorilla cart because this was what I was looking forward to. This entire time I kept thinking to myself, oh my gosh, this cart is perfect for my job. It's going to make the whole process so much easier. And I knew that navigating it from the back of the truck to the garden would be slightly tricky just because with narrow pathways it always is but i figured the dumping feature would make it all worth it and when i figured out that i couldn't use the feature i was very very bummed out with myself but at the same time it was so hot that i felt like there was no point in dwelling on it too much i just had to get to work if i were to rate that gorilla cart right now though 
I would rate that thing a 10 out of 10 because I've used a wheelbarrow. I have a wheelbarrow and that thing is so bulky and hard to navigate and it barely fits in between my garden beds and this gorilla cart is still a little bit difficult to navigate just because the pathways are so narrow. It glides through like butter. It's amazing and I'm carrying a lot of weight on it but I'm, I don't feel that with the wheelbarrow. I felt like I was carrying the weight because it got so heavy. I'm done for today. I'm not done fixing up the garden beds, but I'm gonna show you what I got done. All the irrigation's still off, but look how much cleaner the beds look this compared to this. It just looks ready to be planted in. I haven't put the irrigation back on because I still need to top dress with some fertilizer and azomite, and look how gorgeous that looks. Oh my goodness, I feel so proud. I finished dumping out one more into this garden bed, except I don't have the energy to finish spreading it out because it just takes forever. But I did get to finish all of these and look how much better that looks. Oh, yes. Now I can actually see where everything is gonna go. 